And well, thanks for doing this for us. This is awesome. Oh, you're welcome. It's my pleasure. So, so a little about me. I'm from outside of uh, Okotoks, Alberta, Canada. I live on an acreage. Um, and I've been, I don't know, you know that we're all provers, right? Yes. Yeah. So I've been a prover for about a year and two months now. No, okay. two years and two months. Years and two months. <laughs> yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. And you're enjoying that? Oh, I love it. Oh, fantastic. Okay. So what do you want to get out of our session today? You know, I have a tough time even expressing my feelings in vocalizing and writing them is very difficult for me, but I'm working on it. It's like a steady process and I like the consistency of the 40 day. So mm -hmm. I just have a tough time writing down how I feel. Okay. Hmm. Will you bring me around to that later on? Because I want to talk to you about that. And it's going to be really, really helpful. I'm excited about what we're going to discuss. Okay? So sure, remember to you. bring me back around to that. Okay? Great. All right. Let's go to Jessica. Hi, Jessica. Hi, how are you? Fantastic. How are you? Oh, great. And what I'm going to do really quick is mute everyone just because we've got some background noise. Yes. So it's, when it it's, comes around it to, to for time for anyone to speak, just unmute yourself. So let me get that done really quick. Okay, everyone is muted, so you'll have to unmute yourself. Um, really quick, tell me how to say your name. <laughs> you'll have to unmute yourself. There you go, Zara. Zara. Okay, that's what I was saying, but I was like, I don't want to say her name wrong. So. <laughs> Uh, thank you so much for doing this with us. When Brandy said she got you to to be on our Zoom, I was like, what? Oh, my gosh. So I got your um, your book as a gift um, from one of my friends a long time ago, and I never actually picked it up and started using it uh, until recently when we all started as a big group. So I've kind of been getting into this whole manifestation um, space, I guess you could say, over the last year. And I'm continuing to grow and learn and realize that it's a real thing, right? So I'm excited to hear from you and just learn more from you. And this has just been a total game changer for me in general. And I can't wait to see what's next. So what do you want to get out of the session tonight? I would kind of like to learn how to take it to the next level. I feel like um, at this point, like I'm really good at, um, you know, little things, I guess you could say, manifesting small things, but I think I still have that doubt inside of me that I would ever be able to manifest something major, you know what I mean? So, so maybe um, if you could give us some tips for on that, sure. that would be really helpful for me. That's a fantastic question. Amazing. We're going to have so much fun with this. Okay. Thank you so much. Oh, you're welcome. It's my pleasure. Who's going to be next? Oh, Brandy, why don't you jump in, sweetie? Hi. Hi. Thank you so much. I'm sticking a charger in my phone. <laughs> uh, so I am so excited. I've been, um, you know, kind of on this like spiritual path um, for many years. I, um, I tell everybody I had a crazy aunt, um, but she wasn't the crazy one. Everybody else was crazy. But, you know, just that, that crazy aunt that liked things that weren't um, normal at the the time and so that kind of um gave me that feeling that something else was out there and that the universe really um really listens and that your thoughts are really important so um i'm just so excited that i'm working with a group of people that we all have we all have the same um thoughts and so many people that are in this group have gotten your book as a gift which was amazing <laughs> and so that's and, yes so many of those people that got your book as a gift hadn't started reading it yet. <laughs> and, and it was the same for me. I got this book and I thought, oh my goodness, we're going to do it together. So um, I guess what I would like to, um, to get out of this is um, just so, like, I think that I would do well with um, knowing more with consistency 
Okay. Um, just, just some ideas when, when, I don't know, when you're just not feeling it to kind of make yourself like little tips that I've heard some okay. things were like, um, laugh out loud for 20 seconds and get yourself in a good place. So maybe some ideas along those lines. Okay. Sounds good. Perfect. That's a really, really good question. Okay. So moving along, uh, Karen. Hi, Karen. Hello there, Zara. It's so nice to meet you. It is very nice to meet you. Thank you so much for doing this for our group. Oh, sure you guys are most welcome. Right. I just needed to get it out there. <laughs> <laughs> so All right. I live in St. Albert, Alberta, which is near Edmonton. Oh, wow. Okay. I'm a former music professor, and I've had my private business for about a year and a half now. And I have been loving this. Oh, fantastic. Good. I'm glad. Heard, I mean, I've heard about the secret, right? Yeah. But never investigated. And um, yeah. since joining Prove It, I've just been hearing people talk about manifestation and the law of attraction. And I was like, okay. So I actually bought this for myself for Christmas. Oh, lovely. I hadn't started it yet, but I did start a gratitude journal. So okay. that now I've been using this because it includes the gratitude portion. So I, I love this. I actually bought myself another copy so I can start all over again when I'm done. <laughs> okay, fantastic. Okay, so just so you guys know, if you're on the Facebook Unlimited Forum, if you're not, you should join. And if you are, then it's important for you to know that a PDF of the workbook pages is loaded into the files tab of the group so that once you finish the workbook, if you want to repeat the workout, you just have to print it out. You don't need to buy another book. Oh, wonderful. Thank you. Welcome. All right. Awesome. So um, what would be one question that you would want answered today? How do I find the space between my thoughts for meditation? Okay. All yeah. right. Okay. <laughs> Awesome. That's a really good question. Thanks. Okay, so Fresno, Kelly. Kelly. Hi, Kelly. Hi. Coming from, once again, sunny California. It's been pretty rainy over here. We're not used to that in May. <laughs> so um, I'm a, I don't know, I consider myself a rather new prover. I've only been um, using the product since October. And I love how it changes lives. I'm totally excited about that. Um, and I kind of used some of your practices when my husband's team went to Robotics World Championships and kept saying to myself, wouldn't it be great if these kids won this world championship? And they did. Oh, so wow. that was amazing. Um, and I've been pretty consistent with my writings, but um, I don't know that my private experience is growing as much as I would like to, as much as I feel like I invest my time and my thoughts in. Um, but then again, it's the end of the school year, so maybe I need to invest more of my effort in that as well. So I think my biggest question for you would just be, how do I notice the little things that are being manifested in the bigger things that I'm asking? Hmm. Okay. Good question. All right. <laughs> Okay, Brooke. Hi, Brooke. Let's see. Unmute you. I can't hear you, Brooke. Oh, there. Are you talking to me? Yes, I am. Hi, how are you? Fantastic. How are you, my dear? I am on the go, as you can see. <laughs> yes. Yes. Um, I am so grateful, for, so grateful for your book. It is, um, oh, it's wonderful. It is so wonderful. Um, I, I'm going to confess that I have not done it daily because I lost my book. And so um, we are in the process of moving. We just built our dream home. And um, so I'm going to go download the PDFs. <laughs> So okay. I have looked everywhere and have another one on its way. <laughs> when you stop, when you stop looking, it but will my, show up. It will. I've, I'm going to manifest it to you. You are. I did. It just hasn't came up yet. <laughs> What's your question? Um, I had a question before you called on me. Um, 
I want to know, um, it kind of the, as the meditation, um, mine is more, it's more prayerful. Um, and I love how in your book, it talks about how, um, God, you know, it's God because that is the center of my life. And, um, you know, is, is the meditation is whenever you're talking about those two, cause you address God and then, um, you know, a higher being, but is, I mean, do we just take it as, as we are, as we just take it where we are, um, with our relationships with God? Does that Good make sense? Question. Okay. Fantastic. We're going to have so much fun. All these amazing questions coming up. Okay. Hang on to that one, Brooke, because that's a really good okay. question. All right. So we'll do a, there's more than one question about meditation. So we'll go into that with uh, more emphasis. Who did I miss? Sandy. Hi, Sandy. Got to hit unmute, sweetie. Unmute your mic because I can't hear you yet. <laughs> I don't know how. <laughs> ah, you did it. <laughs> okay. Um, my problem is getting into the meditation. I'm just starting the book and I don't really know how to get into meditation. Okay. No problem. We'll, we're going to spend some time on meditation because it seems a lot of people here would like some help on it. How about Tracy? Tracy Wilson. Tracy, not there? Okay, Christy. Hi, Christy. Not there. Logged on, but not there. Or figuring it out. All right. When you figure it out, just jump in. I'm okay with that. So how about Laura? Hmm. Ashley, Carrie, whoever wants to jump in. If you have a question, jump in and let me know what your question is so that I can address it as we go along. All right. So if nobody's jumping in, let's... Hey, I have one more. I have one more question that I would like to ask. Sure. If you can go over like almost every single day. I obviously, I think everybody probably does the same thing. Like you manifest this amazing day to where you don't let anything get you down or like mess with your mood. Clearly mm -hmm. that happens <laughs> almost every single day, especially for me because I have a toddler. So I would love, I guess maybe kind of along the lines of what Brandy was talking about, like how do you get, whenever you do get off of your path of, of happiness and focus and where you want your mindset to be, whenever that gets knocked off, like, what in the world can I do to get out of that and get back into positivity? And is okay. there, and is there a way, or is it even possible? Like maybe for you, like, are there people out there who are really so grounded in positivity that nothing can knock them off? Like, is that even possible? We'll talk about that. That's okay. such an amazing question. All right, so there's uh, Leslie Shelby or Shebel. I don't know how to say your name. Do you want to add anything? No, I'm good. I'm really excited to, with all the other topics that I've heard from everybody. Um, meditation, I'd love to hear some more things about that. I mean, I try not to overthink it, but I don't know if I'm doing it right or not what okay you know i just try to take quiet time and try so, and what i'm hearing a lot from all of you is meditation is something that you want to get a better handle on and i know that all of you are part of pruitt so definitely working on the business and allowing that business to provide you with the prosperity and the abundance that you're looking for is also part of the reason for putting all this effort into self-improvement and growth. So that's something that I also want to talk about. Now, I'll tell you a little bit about myself in case you don't already know. And I'll tell you a little bit about how the Unlimited Workbook came about. 
and then I'll tell you what is the best way to use the workbook in, in order to get to where you want to go. And we'll go one by one and we'll address all those amazing questions that you guys have because they're really, really good questions. So as far as myself is concerned, um, I guess everybody has challenges in their life and I've had my fair share. So um, I've been married twice and the first time I was married, it was a traditional arranged marriage and it was an abusive situation that I actually ran away from home. And um, because that just seemed to be the only way out of it. And, and then I had to work on putting myself back on my feet and finding financial independence as well as being a single mom at that point in time was not the easiest journey. There were a lot of pitfalls and there were a lot of things that um, I, I uh, learned to deal with. And I remember telling myself one day, um, that, you know, like I, I get into this depression where I, um, I, I, it feels as if nothing's going right for me. And, and I'm finding out that I am finding it easier and easier to crawl out of that. And, and so, you know, like I used to, there used to be this period where I'd be unhappy for six months, but then that period became four months and then it became a month and then it became a couple of days. And it was all because I was using these strategies, self-talk strategies in order to bring myself out of that slump because it was so important to come out of that slump. And what made it so important to come out of that slump was the fact that I had a child who was beautiful and I wanted to provide so much for this child. And so that would always, that priority would always make me do the things that I needed to do in order to come out. And that's what your, basically your inspiration has to be, is you procrastinate when things are not important enough. When something is really important, when it's a matter of your, you know, whatever life or, or something that you hold as important as life, then you do whatever you need to do. And so for me, that meant I would talk to anybody. I would go across town. I would take a day off work. I would do whatever I needed to do in order to listen to those people who could show me a better way, easier way of um, making my life better, easier, and more prosperous. So that was always at the back of my mind and I spent a lot of time attending courses and I took all sorts of courses, NLP, hypnosis, psyche, Reiki, lots of stuff. I've been through a lot of stuff. And, and then I moved to Canada and I was totally new. I had, no, I had no family in Canada and I moved here because I married again after 12 years. So my daughter was about I guess 10 years, 10 or 11. And I moved to Canada because he was Canadian. And then um, and I got pregnant and had a baby. And in that, in that duration, in, in that year and a half, my mother fell sick and was, it was like um, dementia and she was bedridden very quickly. She, she declined very quickly. And so I had this thing about wanting to go and visit her and she was back in Pakistan. And then I discovered that my husband was having an affair and that just completely destroyed me. Those two things happened together and was a lot for me emotionally to deal with that. But I found, and I had already found law of attraction at that point in time um, in the sense that it used to be called motivation or inspiration and law of attraction is just the new term that has been given to it, but it's really the same old stuff. Nothing has changed. Um, it's the same thing Napoleon Hill taught and it's the same thing that uh, a lot of people whose names I can't remember just now <laughs> have taught, but it's really the same thing. And it really is all about our self-talk. That is the key. It's learning to manage our mind is where all the action is. And, and that's where all our challenges and fears are. And that if we can just get a handle on that, then everything else becomes easy. And so um, 
so briefly speaking, from there, uh, I found that I had to leave because I was not able to, um, to fix the situation and it wasn't fixable. So I had to walk away. And so now I was in a new country with no job because I was on mat leave. Uh, I didn't have the right skills for this country and I had to start all over again. And now I didn't have a home. And because of the breakup, I had sold my condo in Pakistan and put money into this home that we bought in Canada, but I didn't know the laws. I was new here. And anyway, I came out of that whole situation losing the equity that I put into the home with a debt of $45,000 nowhere to live, two children, and um, having to put myself back on my feet. And that was when I consciously started using, applying law of attraction in order to change all of that for myself. And I remember my brother telling me, why don't you come back to Pakistan? Because you know, I, I, I left a very high paying job in Pakistan to come to Canada. And my brother was like, you should just go back and you can start uh, uh, over again and I said no I'm going to stay here and I'm going to work it out right here and I'm so thrilled that I made that decision because things have just become so so good and I feel good and everything's to making mistakes so here's the first thing I want you guys to know I made lots of mistakes in applying law of attraction because it is so easy to say, oh, just change your thoughts. It's not that easy to change your thoughts. The, the first thing that happens when you learn about law of attraction is that you want to apply it to those things that you really, really want to have. And that actually is the biggest mistake you could ever make. Because if you start using law of attraction and applying it to those things that you've been wanting to change for a very long time, you actually make those problems bigger because that is not the way to change anything. And that was my biggest learning from, uh, from going through that whole phase. And my other learning was, you know how uh, um, when The Secret came out, and I watched The Secret, it was all about, oh, you don't need to do any work at all. Things are just going to come together. And so, um, so I stopped doing some of the things that I was doing that were giving me the results that I wanted to get. I stopped doing those things because I thought, oh, I don't need to work this hard. Why am I doing all of this? You know, this law of attraction stuff. And because I had a history of following Deepak Chopra and I had a history, I'd been following Wayne Dyer for many years and Deepak Chopra and Eckhart Tolle. All of those were pre-secret for me. Um, the only thing that the secret brought to me that was additional was an introduction to Abraham Hicks. But I had already been studying all the other teachers in that. But I took that little thing that says, you don't need to take action. And I stopped doing some of the things that I was doing and, and everything went down. I almost lost my house. I was this close from filing for bankruptcy. And then I got my act together. I, I said, no, this, this can't be happening. There's something that I'm doing that I'm not grasping. What is it? And, and, and then I found out what it was. And what it was, was that I was thinking too much about my goals. In order for law of attraction to work, you actually have to get off the subject of your goals. And, and that's why when you read the section about goals in the unlimited book, where is that section? Uh, when you read that section, if you have the printed copy of the workbook. It is, it is page 10 of the workbook. And the last part of it says, there's, there's like an affirmation in there that says, it is my positive intention to create a shift in my life that will open new doors and allow my well-being to flow. I want to achieve improvement in all aspects of my life. I want more abundance, more health, 
more love, more confidence, more joy, more satisfaction, more peace. I want to feel in control of my life. I want to feel good. As I start this journey, I'm willing to learn and to be open to all good things that are waiting for me. And then when you get to the section on actually starting the workout, the journey begins here, which is on page 22. It says specifically in that section, don't focus on the goals that you want to achieve. Acknowledge your goals and then tell yourself that you're going to set them aside for these 40 days. And the reason I say that is because I know from my own experience, having dug that hole and fallen into it, then have had to crawl out of it, that that's the wrong way to do it when you're starting out, when you don't have a handle on law of attraction. So that I want to say that to you with emphasis is that, yes, we want to improve our lives. We want to improve our relationships. We want tons of prosperity to come to us through whatever avenue we are pursuing. And for you guys all being in Prove It, you want to build that business and make it huge for yourself. But that is really important. Don't focus on the business while you're doing the workout. That is my first request of you. And it is a very sincere request. Don't focus on the business. Don't tell yourself that this doing this 40 day workout is about getting results in the business. Because when something is not working, so our, our mind is so powerful. Wherever we put our focus, meaning whatever we start thinking about, our mind makes it bigger. So if you focus on the fact that money isn't coming and somebody here said that business wasn't growing as fast as they wanted it to, if you focus on that, you're making that bigger. You're making the absence of money bigger by thinking about it. So when you stop thinking about it, now you're not making the absence of it bigger. And so now it can come. Does that make sense? Right? So that's the first thing I want you guys to do. All of you step away from think, being obsessed about the business. And I think I was coaching someone else a couple of days ago and she was obsessed about something as well. And I was like, just stop it. Stop going there. Stop going there. And that's what discipline is all about. Discipline is about reminding yourself that this is wrong for me, so I'm not going to do it. I know Zara's told me this is wrong for me, so I'm not going to do it. It's, you know what happens is when we're kids, when we're younger, our, and now a lot of you here must have children of your own. So what happens is, our parents tell us what to do and what not to do. Don't do this. It's not good for you, right? And so now we have someone who's giving us that guidance. Don't do this and do this. Don't do this and do this. And then when we leave home and we start our own lives, now we don't have anyone telling us to do this and don't do this. So what happens is in the beginning, if we don't pay attention, we start procrastinating and we don't discipline ourselves. We have no self-discipline. We just, we're just like a rolling stone going along, right? So our parents wanted the best for us, but that really is not the best for children, for the parents to become their guidance. Because when the children learn that they have to make their own decisions, they learn that capacity to have self-discipline right from the beginning. So we now, you and I, we have to reestablish that self-discipline for us that says, I have to do this. So, you know, just like when you get business training, in, in your business training, you are taught that there are things that you need to do. Discipline, consistency are very important. And so discipline and consistency in doing this work is also really, really important. It's that self-discipline that says, I'm not going to think about things that are going to hurt me. I am going to stay focused on those things that are going to help me. 
And so do the work. So long time ago, remember when I was telling you that I was so close to losing my house. And then I was listening to Abraham Hicks and they said, just do the work without looking for the results. And then the results will come. So I took that to heart and I said, okay, that's exactly because I am in such a bad place just now that I don't even know how I can improve this. So I'm just going to do what they're saying. I'm going to stop thinking about how I'm going to dig my way out of where I am. And I'm just going to focus on doing the work. And it wasn't long. I don't know. Maybe it was a couple of months. Uh, at the most, it was a couple of months. And one day I remember this clearly. I remember that day clearly. I woke up and I sat up in my bed, looked out and I had trees outside uh, my window. I looked at the trees and I sat up and I said to myself, oh my God, this stuff works. Everything has changed. And I wasn't even thinking about it. I was just doing the work. And so, what happened is then I, I became um, particular. I became disciplined about doing the work. And like a lot of you guys, some days I would do the appreciation, other days I wouldn't. Some days I would do the meditation and other days I wouldn't. And yes, meditation was one of those things that I had to, uh, I had to really get into it to understand it in order to find a way to do it. Because prior to that, I used to be like one of those wind up toys, you know, like you wind it up and you set it down and it keeps going round and round in circles and then it's exhausting. Yes, exactly like that, Karen. Uh, it, it, and you're exhausted and you just, at the end of the day, that was me. At the end of the day, I was irritable. I was angry. I was uh, tired and I was depressed because it just seemed like I was going round and round in circles and things were not going anywhere. So, um, like I said, I wasn't disciplined with doing the workout, just like a lot of you. And what I found was when I stopped doing these things, the, the changes that I was observing in my life slowed down, sometimes came to a complete stop. And then I would, when things, so things would go really, really well. And then I got so busy with my work and business and everything, then I would stop. And then things would kind of taper off. And then I was like, oh no, where's my workout? And then I would start it again and things would go up again. And then I would stop again and again it would taper off. So I noticed that consistency was important because I wanted this, I wanted my business to be consistent. I, I didn't want it to go like this. So because keeping it consistent was important to me and I found the link, I found the link with the work. So therefore I became consistent with the work. And then after, uh, after I was consistent and I was teaching at this point in time, I was teaching. So I had started a blog in way back when I started my blog, nobody knew about law of attraction. People looked at you funny if you said law of attraction because nobody knew what it was. So I had no friends that I could talk to about law of attraction and the stuff that I was learning. So I started writing a blog about it. And then people who were interested, I don't know how they found my blog, but I started getting people sending me emails, asking for advice. And so it, it started taking up so much of my time that I decided, okay, I have to charge for this because you know, it's, I, can't, I can't do other stuff because I'm doing this. So that's how my coaching business was born. And then after a couple of years, I met this girl and she, I, I developed a connection with her and she so badly wanted her life to improve and she wanted so many changes in her life. And I would say to her, okay, do this and do this and do this and do this. And then she would do it. But then like me, she would fall off the wagon. And so I said, okay, Moni, her name was Moni. And, and I said, Moni, okay, I'm going to develop uh, like a cheat sheet for you. Do these things. And I want you to do them every day. And so that's how this book was born. It's dedicated to her. There's a dedication in the book to her because this book was was born. So I, I developed the workout for her 
and sent it to her. And then I thought, golly, this is really good. I should do it too. This is going to give me even more consistency than I've had so far. So then I said, okay, you know what? Uh, and I remembered once that I, uh, I've always invested in coaching and courses and self-improvement stuff. And I remember the one time that I was with a coach and, and I wasn't feeling very happy with him because he was asking me to do a lot of work. So he met me for breakfast and I remember asking him, Randy, have you done your own workbook? Do you realize what it takes to do this workbook? And Randy said to me, no. To be honest, and I'm so glad that he was honest with me. And he said, no, I haven't done it. And I said, okay, Randy, thank you so much, but you know what, I'm not gonna work with you. And so when I gave this workbook to Moni, I decided I have to start doing it myself as well. I can't just ask someone else to do it and me not do it. So then Moni and I both started doing the workout and got amazing results from it. And, and that's when I, I came to this conclusion that, oh my God, this is the way to do it. You have to make all these things a part of your life and then life is smooth. And I started feeling that inner peace and I thought, okay, now I have to share this stuff. I'm gonna share it with other people. And so that's how this happened. And I'm gonna tell you that consistency is the most important thing. But you don't have to become consistent with doing everything, all the exercises right from the day get go. You don't have to do that. Just if you're going to pick a place to start, do the morning pre-paving and the nighttime pre-paving. Just do those two. And remember when I was telling you that I one day I woke up and my life had changed? At that point in time, I was not doing meditation. I was only doing appreciation and pre-paving. I wasn't even doing visualization sometimes maybe, but I was only doing the appreciation and the pre-paving and in six months, everything changed. And then I added more things to it because I wanted that change to keep going on and go faster. I wanted faster change. That's why the workbook is called Accelerate Manifestation, right? You want to access. So what happens is slowly you bring yourself up to this level where now you are able to do the whole workout. But it doesn't, it's not like when you go to the gym, you don't pick up weights and run a mile and do all of it the first day. You don't do that, right? You don't read the whole, do all the math exercises to write an exam in one week. You, you build your skill up to that level. So if you're not at a level where this, you can do all of this, then break it down and bring yourself up to a level where after 40 days, now you're at a stage where you can go through the whole day and do all the exercises. I'll tell you something, the appreciation section and the blessing section, it just becomes the way you think about things. It does not take any time at all. And the way I do the visualization, which is just one line, takes only 60 seconds. It does not take long. And, and that is because of the way I teach visualization. People teach visualization and a lot of the other tools with an incomplete understanding of how law of attraction works. And that is because law of attraction has turned into a business. And there are a lot of people who are teaching it out there without actually knowing how it works. It's the business aspect that's got them in there, not the fact that they really know how it works. So the most important thing, if you can see this, I use this as a proxy for the emotional scale. The most important thing is how are you feeling emotionally? An emotional high is over here at a place of joy and an emotional low is over here at a place of despair. In between, right at the middle is worry, right? And so if you do a visualization that has a lot of detail in it, I'm gonna win this award and have so much in sales. 
if you do that kind of vis visualization when you're right here at the top of the emotional scale, awesome. But if you don't even know where you are on the emotional scale and maybe you're over here and you do that kind of a detailed visualization, you actually shoot yourself in the foot, you push the things that you want further away from you. And that is important to know. So when we are building businesses, and I worked with a lot of people in network marketing, I have been involved in network marketing as well, because that was one of the things that I tried to do in order to get back on my financial feet. And I'll tell you, there is this um, huge emphasis on goals. You got to do this and you got to do it and you got to do it quickly. And if you're over here, then that approach works and it's fantastic. And a lot of the leaders have that approach. They are excited about their product. They are excited about building their business and they are over here. But sometimes for people who join the business, so this is what I see happening. People join the business because they are inspired by this person who is over here. And then when they start doing the business themselves, they lose this connection and they fall down the scale somewhere. And when you fall down the scale, you cannot still do the same activities that you, sh you were doing over here. The set of activities that you do here is different and cannot be the same as, you, as the activities over here. You have to do things differently. And that's where I see people saying, oh, it's slowed down and now I don't know what to do. And it's because it's not this person's responsibility to keep pulling you up. That's a huge response. They cannot do that. They can do it for a short period of time to get you running, but they can't do it on a consistent basis. So you all need to find that energy in yourselves in order to make your business work. And that's why the workout is important because if you do the workout, it, the workout has what it takes to lift you from wherever you are and bring you up here. That is the power of the workout and that is why it's so important for people who are trying to build their businesses to do the workout with discipline because it will naturally lift you and bring it bring you guys up here and when you're and you don't even need to get to the top you just need to get higher than the worry line just above the middle point and then things will start happening right so if things are not happening for you in your business they're not happening for only two reasons one is that you don't know where you are on the emotional scale. And so you're doing the wrong thing at the wrong place on the emotional scale. And the second is that you don't really understand how to use the tools in the workbook. Okay, so those are the only two reasons. And both of those are fixable. Both of those things are fixable. And that's why I, I, I am so happy that Brandy, reach out to me because I want you guys to be successful. Because one of the biggest things that I've learned in my journey with Law of Attraction is that the pie of abundance and prosperity, it is not limited. It's not one pie that we all participate in. We each have our own pie. And the pie actually becomes bigger and bigger and bigger as our capacity to allow abundance improves. Isn't that wonderful? And so, so now I know that when I help someone else, the energy that that gives me actually increases my pie. How wonderful is that, right? And that's what those people in your organization, those people who are your leaders, they know that. When they recruit someone into the organization, they know that. They know that they're not just, they're not, it's not one pie. They're not sharing their pie with you. They're giving you the ability to have your own pie. How awesome is that, right? 
And so, and when they do that and they feel good about it, their pie becomes bigger too, right? And that's so wonderful. So what I want to accomplish, and you guys have already asked those questions right here. Those are the questions I want you to take the answers back with you tonight, because the answers to those questions are going to help you to figure out how to use the tools. And the most important thing to figure out where you are on the emotional scale. And if you go to my YouTube uh, channel, there are a lot of videos that will help you with that. Okay. Because I talk about this stuff a lot. And what I realized when I started really, okay, so I'm going to give you another analogy. I believe that there are two types of people in the world. There's that person who, if you give them a large screen TV and a remote control, they just want to know how to click it on and off and change the channel and, and you know, tune the volume up and down. And then there's another type of person. So that's the first type of person. And then there's another type of person. And that person is the one who says, hmm, how does this work? Let me take it apart and figure it out. And then I'll put it back together again. And then I will use it and it'll be more fun. Right? So I'm that kind of person. I'm the person who wanted to take law of attraction apart in order to understand how it works and then put it back together because I, I felt that there was something missing in how it was being taught. And, and I felt that, that that was the reason why it wasn't working for me was because something was missing and somebody out there had not given me the whole story, right? So I wanna share the whole story with you. Okay, is that a deal? You're gonna get the whole story. And the story is that we lose our emotional connection. You know, when they say, be strong. So remember when I told you how I ran away from home? Well, the whole world told me, be strong. How, how can you tell me be strong? Do you, do you have any idea what I'm going through? It's so easy for someone to stand up and say, be strong. They don't know what it takes emotionally for, for you to do that, right? But what happens is we listen. And what, what happens is we start pushing our emotions away. We say, yes, you're right, I should be strong. You're right, I should be strong, I shouldn't cry. You know, I trained myself so well not to cry that I didn't cry when my mother died. And then when she made her transition, I realized that I wasn't crying. And my mother was my best friend. So I then started taking it seriously and I said, okay, I have to learn how to cry again. I have to learn to connect with my emotion because what that is telling me is this whole journey of be strong, be strong, be strong, I've lost my emotional connection. And when you lose your emotional connection, you don't know where you are on the emotional scale. And when you don't know where you are on the emotional scale, then you don't know which tools are right to use at the right time. And that's, that's why it's important to know where you are on the emotional scale, right? Like affirmations and visualization, those, those specifically those tools are very linked to your emotional state. So one of the things that I did with the Unlimited book is that I designed everything as if people were below the worry line. And so when you're going through this book, you never have to worry about where you are on the emotional scale because the book is designed in a way to take everyone from here to here. And if you're already here, it's just gonna take you higher. But the whole book is designed in a way that you never have to be concerned about where you are. The tools will work. Okay, that is why the affirmations are so general. They're so general that you can't look at an affirmation and say that's lies, right? And that's the important thing to know. You cannot lie to yourself and make progress. You cannot lie about something and achieve an outcome. Because what happens is there are two parts of us. There's this, our head, but there's the soul part of us, right? When the soul and the mind are going in the same direction, 
then you are successful. And when the soul is going this way and the mind is going this way, that pulls us apart. Okay? And then we can't be successful. Well, the soul part of us, the, the logical part of us, does not lie, does not accept lies at all. But the emotional part of us, our soul part is also our emotional part. Our emotional part says anything is possible. I can have a huge goal because the soul is looking at things from the top. It has the bird's eye view, but the mind is looking at the trees and finding no path to go through the forest. But the soul is looking at the forest from up here and can see all the paths, right? So the soul says it's possible and the mind says it's not. So you have to find words when you're talking to yourself. You have to find words that help your soul and your mind to go in the same direction. Because otherwise the mind is going to say, you liar. And then it's self-sabotage. That's what self-sabotage is all about. Self-sabotage is us not accepting the direction that our heart wants to go. So, you know, when we say heart, that's actually this, what I call the non-physical mind or the soul. Our heart says, I want this goal. I want to be successful. Our mind says, are you kidding? You don't know anyone. Who's going to buy from you? Right? You don't have time. You're running out of time. You haven't done the work that you need to, to do today. Right? So we have to find a way to bind these two together. It's like, you know, um, I don't know how many of you have uh, significant others, but you know how it is in, in a relationship with anyone, or even if you're working in a company, um, if you have jobs and you're building this on the side, think about it. Those relationships in which both spouses or partners are aligned and working in the same direction, then they are making progress. Otherwise, they fall apart, right? Those relationships fall apart. In an organization, if you're working, you have to follow those guidelines of that organization. You have to be aligned with those things. And when we don't find alignment, we don't want to work there anymore, right? So we have two things. We have our heart, which is our soul, and our mind. And if they're not aligned, we can't make progress. We get stuck. That's how we get stuck. So you have to find a way that your mind will allow itself to see the possibility that the heart already sees. Okay? Makes sense? You have to talk to your mind. You have to think those thoughts that allow your mind to buy into the dream that the heart is showing it. It's when the mind does not buy in, that's when we run into trouble. Okay, does that make sense? All right, fantastic. So that's why the affirmations are so general. The future can be better with the past. Well, mind can't argue with that. There's a possibility. The future can be better than the past, right? Anything is possible. All things, exist. All things are possible. Yeah. There is a possibility. There's a possibility that somebody might leave a bag full of a million dollars outside. The possibility is there. Whether that possibility turns into a probability and then the probability turns into a certainty is a different thing. We are not going down that street. We are just saying the possibility is there. Anything is possible, right? I can, I can accomplish my goals in half the time I thought they would take. That's a possibility, right? Here's what happens. If we, we start, if we allow our mind to start figuring out how those possibilities will become certainties, that's where things go wrong. Because like I said, remember this analogy. It is extremely important. Your heart sees all the paths because it's over here. Your mind only sees the trees, only sees the trees, does not see the path right? So you got to bring your mind along for the journey. 
And that's where, you know how a lot of people say doubt, kill the doubt, get rid of the doubt, get rid of the fear. That's why we say that because you, you need to deal with the fears and the doubt in order to go into the forest. So your heart is calling you into the forest. You're not going because you think there are monsters in the bushes, right? So as long as your mind keeps saying there's a monster in the bush, that's what fear is. That's what doubt is. Doubt is I may not come out the other end, right? This might, I might fall into a deep, deep pit. Who's going to dig me out of it? All of these fears are because the mind doesn't see the path but the heart sees all the paths. But you can't, you can't lead with either your mind or your heart in order to find success. You have to take both of them together. So you know how we say, oh, don't make an impulsive choice. It's always going to lose, you know, go wrong. That's because the heart is taking the leap and the mind isn't going with it. So now if you act, it goes wrong. On the other hand, those people who, who do the pros and the cons and the research and they research everything to death, they're, they're paralyzed, they don't act. And the heart is saying, come on, take some action, take some action. And they're not going, right? Again, they're not aligned. Heart and mind are not aligned. So this workout, remember this, the reason for this workout is to find alignment between the heart and the mind. When they're both in the same space, oh my God, everything falls into place. Okay? So now let's talk about the specific tools and exercises. And um, as I go through the, these tools and exercises, jump in at the point where your question fits in. Okay? All right. So the first part is just pre paving the day. And that is. It's, it's really important and it makes your, our heart and our mind point in the same direction. Because the pre-paving says, I want to end this day feeling happy and satisfied. Who doesn't? Who's going to argue with that, right? I want to be good to myself and others. Who's going to argue with that, right? You can't argue. The mind cannot argue with that pre-paving. And the heart loves it, right? So, so you get your mind and your heart aligned right in the morning. Isn't that a fabulous way to start your day? And then if you keep reminding yourself, so now what happens is when you're rude to someone, if you're rude to someone, your mind is going to say, wait a second, stop. I thought you said in the morning you wanted to be good to yourself and others. What are you doing? And then you feel bad. And when you feel bad, all you have to do is that's okay. I'm going to give this person a hug and make it up. Right? And now again, your heart and your mind become aligned. So by doing the pre-paving, you're basically aligning them. And then the mind is so powerful that when you go off track, it's always going to remind you that you've gone off track and it will get you to come back. That's the power of it. Because yes, our heart, our heart is where all our dreams are. But sometimes our mind just doesn't come along for the journey. We've got to find a way to bring the mind along for that journey. Make sense? Okay. So that's why the pre-paving is really important. And that is why I said to you, if there was just one exercise that you were going to pick, do the pre-paving. Okay. Even if you don't know how it works, but that's the magic of it. The magic of it is that it aligns your heart and your mind. Okay, and then the nighttime pre-paving is the same. It aligns your heart and your mind before you go to sleep. So you end up not spending your whole night letting the mind go in all different directions and worrying all night. You tell your mind, that's it, your work's done, sleep, right? Sleep and reset yourself emotionally and physically. And that's exactly what your heart wants. Right? So they're both aligned. And when you are aligned and you go to sleep, oh my God, your sleep is just so delicious and so invigorating. And you really wake up having a fantastic day. 
Okay. All right. So then meditation is the second one of the exercises. And a lot of times people like to do it in the morning because it's easier in the morning. Not because you, sh you can't do it at any point in time uh, during the day, but because it's easier. And the reason it's easier is because your head isn't full of all the things that need to be done in that day. You're still slow in your head. But soon as you, so, so the biggest mistake is probably uh, grabbing your phone and looking at your email when you first wake up. Because if you do that, now your mind has started speeding ahead and then it's hard because you've got this long list of things in your head that you need to do, that you need to get to. And so it doesn't matter. All that means is that you're going, it might take five minutes more for you to get into that space. So somebody asked, uh, and I forget who it was, but somebody said, how do you get into that space between your thoughts? It is, you, you do that with discipline. So every time your thought wanders, one of the most important things, again, is to pre-pave your meditation. When you pre-pave your meditation, you're basically telling your mind, if my thought wanders, bring me back. Because meditation is what I want to do in this segment of time. And your mind will do that. So if you sit with the intention to meditate and you start thinking about what you need to do, your mind will say, hmm. You were here to meditate. Do you want me to bring you back or do you want to keep going with this thought? And then at that point in time, you bring yourself back into meditation by using a small, unemotional, repetitive thought. Focusing on the sound of the air conditioning is a thought. Any, when you focus, you think. So a lot of times people don't realize that. People say, oh, I did that without thinking about it. You don't do anything without thinking. If you put your eyes on it, if you focused on it, you were thinking about it. Okay? So focusing on something is just putting your attention on it. Put your attention on your breath. Repeat words. I like to count backwards. I also have an app on my phone. I use Rain Sounds. It's an app and you can... Uh, combined with the sound of rain, which is like white noise, you can combine soft piano and other things in it. I, I do a combination of rain and soft piano in the background. And that's what I meditate to. And, and I'm really, really bad at this. I wake up and the first thing I grab is my cell phone. And, and, and that's just being honest, right? And the reason that is, is because I am so committed to everyone who's on the Unlimited Forum that when I wake up, I want to make sure if somebody's put a question on that forum, I need to answer it. So, um, so that's, I do that, but then I also know that I'm not going to be meditating in the morning. That's not when I meditate. I have two cats, two children, and a dog and no locks on any of the doors. So my favorite place to meditate is out in my car. And, and that's why I use the RAIN app because I usually be parked in, in some kind of a shopping plaza or outside the library or somewhere like that. And then I just put my earbuds in my ears, turn on my RAIN app, lock the car, and off I go. Put my dog glasses on and, that's, and I sit in the back not in the front, sit in the back and, uh, and I meditate. And it's uh, usually my meditation is 20 minutes and it's silent meditation. But when I first started trying to learn how to meditate, I did use a lot of guided meditations. And, and they're good because they help you to go into that space where meditation is, which feels like feels like you're in a limbo. There's nothing going on there. There's no light, no sound. And you don't know that you went there, but you know when you're coming out. Because when you're coming out, you start feeling the light on your eyelids and you start hearing sound again. There's a lot more. So there's a video. I have a, a meditation class, the way I teach meditation, on my YouTube channel. So you can go there and look for the video that is about meditation and it has it goes into a lot of detail about meditation. 
Now, what I want to do now is if someone has a specific question about meditation, ask now and I will answer your specific question. And I know two people or three people brought up questions about meditation. So go for it. This is the time. Can I ask you a question? Yeah, sure. Go ahead, Christina. Um, how do you slow your brain down? Like when I try to meditate um, and do the breathing and stuff, and I've used meditation apps at bedtime late, lately with my son to help relax him for the evening. It just, I'm, I'm always doing, doing things, doing things, doing things. I have a lot of things going on, you know, not just with my business, but working full time and having kids and I have family members who are sick and I'm trying to do a benefit. And like, how do you slow your brain down during that meditation process? See, the thing is, Kristen, that it has to do with your beliefs. Your belief is that you have too many things in your mind and it's going to be hard to slow down. And that's why it's going to be hard to slow down. So you have to change your self-talk. Everything is about our self-talk. So what you have to say to yourself is, I can do this. So many other people do. And if you think you had a busy head, oh my God. If you had met me 20 years ago, I was a completely different person. Honest to God. And you know how I speak now? Yeah. I did not speak this way. I spoke very fast. And if yeah. you didn't keep up with me, I would bite you. <laughs> I'm serious. Okay. But, that, but that's how meditation has changed me. Okay. So, but the, what I changed about meditation, so I went from saying, I cannot sit still for two seconds. You expect me to sit still for half an hour? Oh, <laughs> that's not going to happen, right? And then I used to tell myself, my head is so busy. I'm thinking all the time. So I had to deal with these beliefs because my heart, which wanted to meditate, and my mind were not aligned. My mind was saying, there's no way you can do this. And my heart was saying, you got to do this. Okay? So, so what I did was I changed my self-talk. I said, if other people can learn to meditate, then I can learn to meditate too. It's only 15 or 20 minutes. I'm not giving this my whole day. I can put my day on pause for just 15 minutes because I know how beneficial it's going to be for me. Okay, so that's the first thing. And then the second thing that I did was I told myself that I don't have to stop thinking. And this is what I learned. So I learned to meditate from Deepak Chopra. Anything I did before that did not work. But when I attended his meditation workshop, that's when I learned. And I learned because what he said immediately clicked into place for me. And what he said was, you do not need to stop thinking. That was my biggest problem. I was like, I'm thinking all the time. I can't meditate because I thought meditation is about no thought. And that's incorrect. Meditation is not about no thought. Meditation is about allowing thoughts to come but you decide which thoughts should come. Okay. Okay. And mm -hmm. the decision that we make in meditation is that we are going to put all the world aside and we are only going to focus on that which we have decided to think about. What are we thinking about? Well, I'm thinking about counting backwards from 67 or 41 or whatever number comes to me that day. I'm thinking about counting backwards from that number. That's what I've told myself. That's what I'm going to do for 15 minutes. I'm going to call, count backwards. Okay? So that's every that's time, every time you start thinking about something else, you tell yourself, uh-uh. In fact, your mind will tell you, Kristen, you're not counting backwards. Do you want to keep counting backwards? Or do you want to keep thinking about this thing you're thinking about? And that's when you apply your self-discipline and you say, uh -uh, need to complete my meditation because I know how important it is to my well-being. I'm going to start counting backwards again. Make sense? Yes. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Excellent. Okay. So I am not reading any of the comments. So um, Jessica, if you could keep an eye on the comments and if there's a question there, if you could give it to me. Thank you. All right. Who else has a question? Yes, Brandy. Hi. So um, often when I meditate, I fall asleep. 
And I don't feel like I'm sleep deprived. I feel like I sleep amazing. Um, and I have trouble getting comfortable. Like, I feel like when I meditate, I have to lay down. Um, and, and I find it more difficult to, um, to meditate when I'm not like leaning back on something. So and that's okay. So, so meditation and sleep are two very different things. They're both very helpful because sleep is refreshing and meditation is refreshing. Okay. Um, but they are very different things in meditation. We are teaching ourselves to be mindful. Mindful where we teach ourselves to be mindful. We tell our mind that we are going to control what we are thinking about. And in sleep, there's no control. When you sleep, you have no control about on where your thoughts will go, what sort of dreams you will dream. That is the biggest difference. What happens is because of this mindfulness training through meditation, you start noticing when your thoughts are going negative. And when your thoughts are going negative, you go, oh, that wasn't very positive. That wasn't helpful. That was unnecessary. And then you bring yourself back, right? And meditation is the tool that teaches you how to do that. So you start controlling your mind and your mind actually starts helping you to control it. Because when your thoughts wander, your mind will say, you told me you wanted to do this and now you're not doing it. Which one do you want? And then you have a choice, right? So, so that's why do not lie down to do your meditation because you will slip into sleep and you will not accomplish the purpose that meditation is meant for, okay? But it is okay to lean back against something. I always lean back against something because I'm sitting in my car, right? So I'm always sitting and I'm always lean back. That's okay, all right? And a lot of, and, and sometimes you do kind of go into sleep because, because it's, it's a very fine line between meditation and sleep. The next level of going inwards is sleep, right? And if that happens, there's nothing wrong with it, but it's just doing something different than meditation, okay? All right, fantastic. Any other questions on meditation? Yes, Brooke? Um, we had, I had asked earlier and really kind of phrasing it's hard for me, but I guess maybe the difference between meditation and prayer um, would be kind sure. of my, my question. Okay. How so, you address that in the book. I will address that with Dr. Wayne Dyer's words, which I will never forget. So he was in Toronto and I went to see him. And the, the, what he said was, prayer is us talking to God. Right. Meditation is God talking to us. Oh, I love it. Okay, that, that just gave me chills. Okay, yeah. And that's the difference. Because what happens is, it's, and I say this in the video, so you'll all of this that I'm telling you is in that video if you go to YouTube. So in med, it's like, you know, when you're talking to someone who talks very fast and you can't get a word in? So God is always trying to send us guidance. There's always guidance coming to us. But we are not listening because we're so busy in our heads. So when we slow down thought, we allow that guidance to be heard. Right. And when we allow that guidance to be heard and we start acting on it, our entire life changes because we start making better decisions. Right? Perfect. Yes. So that is the difference. Perfect. Thank you so much. Welcome. All right. Any other questions about meditation? All right, then. If no one has a question... Kristen, you, uh, Brooke, you still have a question? No, okay. All right, so then appreciation. Okay, so yes, there is a, a um, overlap between the section on appreciation and when you bless things, right? The section on blessing is structured and the purpose of those appreciations and blessings is to remind you that there are things in your life that deserve appreciation on a daily basis. So the food you eat, your body, the place where you live, your career, all of those things 
must be appreciated. So if I said just, if I said to you, just appreciate five things every day, well, if it's me, I'm appreciating my puppy, my cat, my second cat, my daughter, my son, that's five. I'm done, right? And I have not appreciated the food that I eat. I've not appreciated the roof over my head. But those things, those everyday little things need to be appreciated because moving forward is all about appreciating where we are now. And if we don't appreciate where we are, then we can not knowingly offer a complaint about where we are. And when we complain, we cannot move forward. A complaint is our logical mind saying, I'm not going with the heart. Basically, that's what it is. Our logical mind saying, that's what a complaint is. Our, uh, a complaint is our logical mind saying, I don't believe you. I don't believe you. It's telling the heart, I don't believe you. Right? The heart is saying, don't worry, everything will work out for you. Everything's going to be okay. And the mind says, I don't believe you. I don't believe you. So the mind is not coming along. When we bless where we are, when we appreciate things, then we are getting the mind to get aligned with the heart. Because the heart is always saying thank you. Heart is always saying thank you, thank you, thank you. I love what I have. I love what I have. And I know I can have more. And the heart says, liar, liar. Where's the more that you promised me three years ago? Right? That's what the mind says. So we just need to quiet that complaining voice. And we do that by appreciating. Because when we appreciate, then the mind says, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We actually do have things to be grateful for. Yeah, our life is not that bad. We're doing pretty good. And when the mind says that, now the mind and the heart are working in the same direction. Okay? Any questions about those sections, those two sections? All right, then next section we're going to talk about is the three things I want to achieve today and the three things that I want the universe to achieve for me. Now I'm going to give you a nugget and this nugget is not in the book. And, and the reason it's not in the book is because I just had this inspiration just now for you guys. And so the thing is, when we give the universe a task to do for us, the problem happens when we look for that manifestation right away. Because if you've told the universe, here, universe, do this for me, now leave it alone because the universe is working on it. Stop worrying about it. Because it's happening, you just can't see it happening. So leave it alone. Okay? Just because you can't see it. So you say to the universe, universe, I would like, um, I don't know, a new car. Well, the universe is working on it. It's going to happen. But if you start if you say that in the morning and at night you say, okay, where's my car? You just got to trust that you've given, <laughs> given it up to the universe. It's on its way, right? That's what that section is all about. It's about saying, I no longer need to work on this because I've delegated this to someone else. And that someone else that I've delegated it to has a lot more power and a lot more resources than I do. Okay. So the section where three things I'm going to do today, my commitment to what I'm going to do today, I put on that list really simple things that I would be doing regardless, like going to work, cooking food, going for a walk, simple things that I'm going to do anyway. Because when you put simple things and you don't put your biggest tasks on that list, you can actually congratulate yourself for having done those tasks right? And it's that congratulation. It's that keeping a commitment that you made. That is what leads to satisfaction at the end of the day. But if you say, I'm going to do all the whatever, yada, 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 that I'm going supposed to do for the whole month, I'm going to do it today. And it's not done by the end of the day. Now you're unhappy. And the purpose of this exercise is to make you happy make you feel happier with your life. 
And you do that by giving yourself really small tasks that you would do regardless. Make sense? Okay. Questions about this? Are we clear about this? Okay, so let's go the next yeah, one. I have a question real quick. Yeah. yeah, go ahead, Kelly. Okay, so if we're not asking for the big things, are we asking for little things that could lead to the big things, or are we just kind of completely ignoring the big things and asking for other things? No, 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 you don't have to ignore anything. You can ask for big things or small things. All you do at the end of the day is not ask for it to be delivered. That's all. Okay. So okay. once we put it out in the mail to the universe, just wait for it to... Just wait for it. And don't repeat it again and again, because if you say, oh, I want this, and then you put it back on your list again the next day, then that's a complaint. The universe okay. sees that as a complaint, okay? The universe mm -hmm. sees that as a complaint because the universe says, okay, you told me. So it's like every day you go to your manager and you ask for a raise. The guy, that person's going to get frustrated with you and say, get lost, right? Yeah. But that's literally what you're doing. You're saying, I asked for this car and it's not here today. So I'm going to ask again. Then I'm going to ask the third day. It's like, oh my God, it's on its way. Stop it. <laughs> so new things every day. New things every day. Okay. Thank okay. you. And keep it really simple. Keep it really simple. It, once you ask for the big stuff, don't ask for it again. Know that it is with the universe and then just ask for the little stuff. You know, I'd like it to be cooler today. I'd like it to be warmer today. Right? Perfect. Things like that. I'd like, per, I'd like green lights all the way to wherever I'm going. Right? Simple little things. Okay. I'm going somewhere and I want to get there in time and I want to have a fantastic meeting with this person I'm meeting with. I'm, go I'm going to make this phone call and I want, I want both of us to get value out of it, right? Those are the yeah. things because you're, as soon as it involves someone else, it is not in your control. As soon as it involves someone else, it is not in your control and it should not be on your list. Okay, that's the key. So if I'm going, what's on my list? I'm going to cook dinner. That's on my list. It's in my control. I can cook dinner, right? I want to go to the grocery store and find everything on my list on sale. That's on the universe's list. That's not on my list, right? See the difference? So even with little things, there are things that we don't control. How somebody is going to talk to me, I don't control that. I'm going to put that on the universe's list. Invariably, when I am meeting with clients or when I am coaching someone, I always give it to the universe. I always prepave that whatever is meant to come from me will come from me for the value of this person who is in front of me, right? Mm -hmm. and, and and so that's, you just put it on the universe's list of things to do. Okay. Thank Very you. Good. good question. Okay. Any other questions about that? No more questions. Okay. Then I'm going to go on to visualization. And the visualization, the way I teach visualization is very simple. It's just about picking a future point in time without measuring how far away that is. Don't measure how far away that is. No need to measure how far away that is. It could be next week because the universe has the capacity to deliver next week or next year, whenever. The point of visualization is to say, yes, I'm so happy because so many good things have happened, right? Everything is working out exactly the way I want. And, and the, the sentence in the book is, I, uh, I feel so happy and blessed. My life is really, really good. I'm happy where I am and reaching for more. And the purpose of that is if you are happy in the future, that means everything that you wanted has come about. So we don't need to be specific. 
we don't need to say it has to be a red car and it has to be a two door and it has to be a, a six cylinder we don't need to say any of that we just have to say i'm happy i'm i'm so happy because then the universe will provide everything in between that gets you to that happiness you don't need to be specific right and and the other reason is remember when i told you you don't need to watch where you are on the emotional scale that's the other reason because if if your visualization is extremely specific and you're over here you're actually shooting yourself in the foot so with this kind of a general visualization you don't even need to figure out where am i on the emotional scale today because guess what we go up and down the emotional scale thousands of time during the day something happens we we hear something on the radio or the news it takes us down something else happens it takes us up right so we're going we're going up and down all the time so don't do that to yourself just stay general because that really is the best thing because really what what do we want we want to be happy and everything that is going to contribute to that happiness has to happen right Okay, so that's the visualization. And then we're just getting to our thoughts at the end of the day. And that's also about appreciation. Just appreciating what has happened during the day, finding things about yourself, about other people, just to spend, you know, it doesn't even, once you get in the habit of it, it doesn't even take more than two minutes to do this stuff the appreciation stuff because really what happens is you start doing it all day all day you are looking at things and you're saying oh that's so pretty oh look at that tree it's so beautiful look at that flower oh that baby that that little girl right you just go around all all day appreciating things that are coming into your life okay so now what are the questions that are still unaddressed so the questions that we started with what questions are still unaddressed so there was this question about whether we should focus on the big things or the small things right i think we've already spent enough time on that and we spent enough time on meditation but if there are any questions at this point in time jump in well i think when i was uh when i asked the questions earlier about how i can't like put my thoughts on paper mm -hmm. i'm thinking i'm overthinking it <laughs> yes you are <laughs> you are overthinking it because okay so here's leslie here's what i want to say to you in this workout we're not putting your thoughts on to paper we're just appreciating in fact you should never put your thoughts on to paper because what happens is when you start putting your thoughts on to paper you go into explanation mode and explanation mode is backward thinking it's not forward thinking okay and appreciation is forward thinking appreciation is not backward appreciation is about what is here now and what am i appreciating that's about to come next right so yeah you are totally overthinking it and you won't any more so that's a good thing Okay, any other questions guys? Okay. I so, have a question that's not about and not about your process, just um a a question. Um my question is I would love to know like um what your inspiration is as far as like people that you that you love or maybe another book that you could suggest for us. I know you had mentioned um Deepak Chopra and Wayne Dyer, Abraham Hicks. I love, like you speak to my soul when you say those names. Um, is there anything else that you, or any books that just really, you just love them? Oh, there's so many books that I love. I couldn't give you a, a complete list. Have you seen my room? Like, I mean, and th this is just what I own. This is not what I borrowed and, and read. And and then this is not my audio book collection, which is on a three terabyte hard disk. Okay, so 
There's lots, but I'll tell you something. The right book for you will show up when you need it. The right book for you will show up when you need it. It'll be the right book. It'll show up right in front of you. And that's what you, that's the best thing you can believe. Whatever I need will show up when I need it. Right? Okay. okay. But yeah, whatever you, you feel you resonate with, it, with, at that point in time, there's something in it for you. So I always say yes, whatever comes. Yes, yes, I like. So I, I, uh, I like physical books. So I like to hold them in my hand. And if the book speaks to me, vibrates to me, I, it's mine. I'm walking home with it, right? We have this um, where we live. I don't know if they're everywhere, but it's a half price bookstore. Mm -hmm. And they have a spiritual section um, where those are my favorite books. And I like to just go. Just go in there and just kind of fill around and pick up yeah. books and do them. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, yes, I mean, I think there's probably nothing that Dr. Van Dyer ever wrote that I did not read. And there's definitely nothing that Abraham Hicks has ever written that I've not read. Deepak Chopra, his latest two or three, two books, maybe I have not read. But uh, other than that, I've read all his stuff. And I find that you get different things when you're reading a book, you pick up different things. And when you, uh, when you listen to the book, you pick up different messages. It's just, there's a difference in the way when we read what we pick up, what, what um, pops and when we are listening, it's different. So I always read, I always have the physical copy as well as the audio copy of the book. I listen to both. I'll tell you my favorite or my, my biggest favorite among Abraham's books are the Sarah books. Yeah. The Sarah books are, uh, uh, it's a story book, but I think, I think it's good for anyone. I listen to them. In fact, I bought them for my children and my children never listened to them. I listen to them <laughs> and I love them. Absolutely love them. And then uh, uh, Deepak Chopra, my favorite of his books is Spontaneous Fulfillment of Desire. That's my favorite book of his. And then Wayne Dyer, um, I forget the name of the book, but it's something to do with inspiration. And on the cover, he has a butterfly on his hand. Mm -hmm. That's my favorite book of uh, Wayne Dyer. Um, I love the... Um when Wayne Dyer interviewed um, the Abraham Hicks. Yeah. Yes. Ooh, it's very beautiful. Powerful. Yeah, very powerful. Um, yeah, I mean, there's a lot of stuff out there. So much stuff out there. And it's all good. If there's something in it, if it's popping up in your experience, right? Excellent. Okay, guys, what other questions do you have for me? All right, then. Who, who here is not a member of the forum, of the Unlimited Forum? All right, then. You know what? Uh, go look for the forum. Join the forum because on the, I'm, I'm very present there. And if you ever have any questions later on that come up for you, you can post them there. And I will look after them. And I post, in the, I post a video there almost every day, almost every day whatever's coming to me that day. Leslie, did you have a question? No, okay, all right. And all right then, I guess that's it. <laughs> I guess that's it. Thank you so much. You're all welcome. Thank all right you, then, you. have fun, have fun. Remember, self-discipline. Thank you so much. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. Bye for now. Bye. Bye. Thank you so Thank much. You. You're Bye -bye. welcome. Bye.